So let's talk about parallel flow. As the name implies, we're going to have two flows at least, which are in parallel. So that means they split each other. It doesn't have to be half and half. It might be, I don't know, maybe 80%, 20%, or even 90%, 10%, whatever percent you can uh, plug in here in these two pipes. Of course, not zero. That will be series. Only one series. But this is parallel flow. So the good thing is that we can model two pipes very easily. Three pipes it starts going a little bit more complex and four, five and multiple pipes they are of course more complex to model. So the thing here on the arrangement in parallel flow is that they start in point, point A so let's say here it's your point A they must pass of course in these tubes let's name these 1, 2 and 3 or lowercase a, b and c, whatever notation or nomenclature you want to choose just make the difference that these are not the same as these flows, okay? and they finish in one point, so that's very useful to know that they eventually each flow of these 1, 2 and 3 they will meet in one point so that's very important with parallel flow you always start in one point and you know where they finish and they finish all the flows together so if you have another flow that you don't know where it goes or it does not finish in this reservoir or this point this is not parallel flow but we call this branch flow and as the name implies it's like following a branch you go away and you never go back so the interesting part in this type of problems is that of course the flow going through A to B is the same, of course if you have 10 liters per second going from A to B well, then you have 10 liters per second receiving on B now you cannot say that from flow 1, 2 and 3, of course you don't know it but you know that if you add all the flows, for example the flows in this pipe flows in the second pipe and flow in the third pipe they must obviously be the same as here and of course we're talking about incompressible flow and steady state so if we don't have those, well, you can suppose this is fail, false but if we have incompressible flow with steady rate for example 10 liters per second from A to B well, of course you need to have Q1, Q2 and Q3 equal to that flow this is very important, this actually will be one of the first rules when solving parallel flow now the other interesting part I wanted to talk about is the total friction in the pipe so that is of course very different if you have a lot of uh, friction right here and you have low friction right here well you are going to have a lot of flow right here and very little flow right here so the friction, the total friction and what I mean with total friction is essentially how many joules you lose how many kilojoules, how many energy you are losing so, and of course it may be per unit time or if you just let it per amount of energy that's alright so the thing right here is we got this problem we cannot assume that the energy or friction loss is going to be in here the same so that's a little problem but one very important thing is that the friction loss per unit mass is the same, so that's good, that's perfect, actually we can relate another equation so let me show you if we have, I don't know, maybe I'm losing 10 joules here and I'm losing 100 joules here but the, the thing here is that I'm passing 1 kilogram right here so I lose 10 joules per kilogram and I'm passing 10 kilogram right here so I got 1 sorry 10 joules per kilogram so actually the same loss per unit mass is kept constant so hopefully this makes uh, sense to you guys if you have low friction you're going to have a high mass flow and if you have high friction you're going to have low mass flow so high friction is low mass and low friction means that many material can flow through so if we have this, this is the inlet goes to this let's say device in which this pipe has a lot of friction well expect low flow and this is very let's say free to move so you have a low 
quality or quantity of friction. So let us make some maths. We're going to learn that this energy loss from this point to this point right here, let's say this is our A and this is our B, so the friction loss per, oops, per unit mass is the same as this one here per unit mass and the same of course as this in unit mass and the good thing is that we can relate this not only to to two pipes but to three four five or whatever number of pipes we have right here so i always like to make this analogy for example if you see a fast cashier of course there's going to be a lot of people because they want to move fast but at the same time because the fast cashier is fast we're going to have a lot of people in the queue and for the other side you have a slow cashier well many people will try to avoid it because even though you have not many people in the line you don't want it because it's slow so let's make a uh, let's relate this for example number of people flowing and fast and slow cashier so the good thing is that eventually hopefully you've seen that you aren't that lucky it will be the same if you go into the slow line or to the fast line because eventually the flow of people is going to be made and that is what I wanted to show you the friction loss per unit mass is the same in each pipe also the same with life many people will go through the easy way and not that many people will go through the hard way but even though it's hard way it's not crowded and here even though it's the easy way it's crowded so actually you cannot move that fast and you can move here fast because there's no people but this is a little bit I don't know maybe there are rocks you need to climb and so on and here you just need to walk so let's plug in some numbers we've got pipe number one two and three from A to B so recall that the flow QA equals QB and if we were to add Q1, Q2, and Q3, we add them up, they should be the same as these flows, okay? Uh, let's say we got these mass flows, and we got this total energy loss per pipe, pipe 1, pipe 2, and pipe 3. So what will be the energy loss per each pipe? Well, we have it right here. You were to do numbers, we will get that if we make the calculation on how many energy we lose per unit kilogram, we will have the same amount here, 650. Okay, so before actually showing you how to solve the problems, try to read all previous material, especially friction and parallel flow. Mm, we read this material and the next material because it's actually kind of abstract. The problem here is or at least in my experience, is that it's better to do one problem or several problems instead of me just talking about numbers. It's always better to jump to a problem, do it by yourself, try to analyze it, think, and check with the solved answer. When you start calculating and reasoning, yes, you will get more understanding on the topic. And recall that this is a theory application course. I don't want you to show you or learn this stuff actually it doesn't make sense to you guys to learn this rule of friction loss per unit mass if you cannot apply it. If I tell you, for example, I got this drop in pressure and I got these uh, flows, how much energy is being lost? Well, it, what pays is not knowing this right here, but to find the, the solution to this question I just told you. So before advancing, guys, please make a review and see you in the next video this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you are for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.